they surrender. You will see uh, General Tarleton and his staff will surrender to the French. They don't surrender to the Carolina Army because these men are aristocrats. They believe in the code of war and they would not surrender to a rebel ragged army. It is beneath them. So they surrender to the French. Here's the thing about this is that Tarleton was the butcher of the South. He had burned and pillaged people in the South. And if the American army got it, they would have hung him in Yorktown. But because the French doesn't believe in capital punishment, you will see Tarleton and his staff go back to Europe and live a long life after this war is over. This the second day when General Cornwallis comes out to surrender his sword to General Washington, he has been wondering who was the spy inside of his head. He couldn't figure it out. He looked at him, and 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 he couldn't figure it out. There was a black man. His name is James Armstead. He was sort of like on loan to General Lafayette. General Lafayette had a strong relationship with James, and he asked him, to sneak inside of Yorktown and spy on the British. He said, fine, he could do that. He sneaks inside and spies on the British. And General Cornwallis says, James, you seem to be a very bright person. Sneak out and smile, spy on America. <laughs> When General Cornwallis comes out on the second day, he sees Baines sitting, breaking bread with General Lafayette in Tulsa. And now he realizes who the fly on the wall was. James Armstead Lafayette was the first successful double agent in the American Revolution, a black man. General Lafayette will buy him from his master on the set and give him his freedom. So, this war is winding now, and these men from Rhode Island are going to. Some of them are going to come back and march to the men to Rochambeau and march back to Rhode Island. You will see three of them who will die over here in the Old Back Trust. The other ones, some of them are going to make it back to Rhode Island because Rhode Island, they ran out of money and they didn't pay their masters for their slaves. And when they get back to Rhode Island, the masters want their property back. They have campaigned for five years. And when they ask the masters to give them back their property and give them their freedom, the master says, no. This man is much too expensive now. He's too precious now. He campaigns in the wintertime, he puts the crop in the springtime. Campaign in the summertime and come home in the fall and harvest the crop. When the war is over, he comes back and asks for his paper. And he says, I'm sorry, I sold you to Jack Keenan while you were gone. And Jack Keenan could not give Sam his free. He will be Keenan's slave for a number of years. And he will sell them again for 92 pounds and 10 shillings. And Dumas keeps him for a while, and he will sell him to Samuel, to uh, Mr. Sutton. 
Mr. Sutton, unfortunately, probably had the heart attack in the field and died. Mrs. Sutton is well off. And she allows Samuel, at the age of 64 years old now, to buy his own freedom for 92 pounds and 10 shillings. He gives her thirty dollars in hard money and works the rest off. And you can see in history where he works for Jack Teaneck. He works for everybody. He married a free mulatto girl. They have a couple children. They own two acres of land. He gets an education. He goes into like the ministry up in Reason. He gets involved in the back to Africa movement. But when he is too infirm to work, because there is a proclamation that anyone who serves in the continental line is due a pension. And he goes to the board and asks them, and they say, well, Samuel, we don't see you on the record. And he's persistent. He goes back three or four times. And finally, they get mad at him and says, You were a slave. 